Welcome to Gigaspaces and our demonstration of the Smart DIH, a digital integration hub for digital transformation and business acceleration. We'll start with an overview of the solution. This is the architecture of the Gigaspaces Smart DIH. At the bottom we see systems of record of various types like relational databases, NoSQL, mainframe, cloud stores, etc. At the top we see the digital applications as well as BI tools for analytics. And in between, we have the DIH. Uh, we like to describe the DIH as having three layers. The integration layer is responsible for event-based integration with each system of record, uh, so that real-time data events can be handled uh, with CDC or streaming, uh, while batch events can be handled with ETL tools. The system of record data is replicated into the DIH. The hosting layer is the data management layer. It's based upon our award-winning uh, distributed in-memory data grid, or IMDG, which offers ultra-low latency along with tiered storage management. So you can balance cost and performance by placing high-priority data in quote-unquote high uh, hot storage, uh, i.e. RAM, uh, while placing low-priority data in warm storage, such as SSD. The digital layer is responsible to power digital apps. It offers multiple modern protocols, such as Java, SQL, .NET, and REST, and can host data services over, over unified data models. Uh, so essentially aggregating the data from different types of data repositories, different technologies, uh, and providing a unified data model in the digital layer. Finally, the smart DIH management and control uh, components offer orchestration, configuration, monitoring, and control capabilities. The smart DIH ops manager provides a portal to connect to data sources, to monitor processing units and services, and also provides a view into the data. The Gigaspaces Smart DIH leverages what's known as a space-based data architecture. So when we refer to data, you hear me say, talk about space contents. And the Ops Manager provides a view into this. Now in our demonstration, uh, we don't yet have any data. I can look at the space icon here and see that we don't have uh, any object types in, in either of these uh, these processing units. Uh, and I can take a look at the services, and you'll see here uh, a range of metrics that will be uh, populated as the Smart DIH runs. But also, down below, you see two stateful services. And these are stateful services that uh, are handling uh, the initial space contents um, and the data that is ingested or through an event-driven push uh, passed to the Smart DIH will be stored in one of these two spaces in our demo. Uh, on the first side, uh, you see the demo, uh, is a stateful service uh, that is fully in memory. Uh, and the tiered service is a combination of data that will be stored in memory uh, as well as on SSD. I can dig into the contents of a particular demo service see how the actual service has been distributed and partitioned uh, along with the resiliency of uh, backups for each primary and various statistics uh, on the actual partitions themselves. Before we jump into configuring the Gigaspaces Smart DIH for ingestion of data and uh, the uh, deployment of services, let's first take a look at our demo scenario. Here you can see we have the Smart DIH uh, pictured in the middle of our diagram uh, with four different systems of record on the bottom. A document store, Mongo, a MySQL relational database, a Kafka stream, and a SQL server. On the top, we're going to emulate a client uh, or show a client application that wants to consume data from those systems of record utilizing the GizSpaces Smart DIH. We'll go through the process of configuring the Smart DIH to have an event-driven push of data into the space, and then we'll set up a microservice in order to service that application. Our demo application uh, is very simple, basically a page programmed in React, which wants to read from a RESTful service in order to provide transaction details for a user by their account number. Here you can see the framework is set up of the application, but it does not yet have the service available to feed data for these transactions. 
And so this is what we'll achieve in our Smart DH demonstration. The first step will be to connect to the space and ingest accounts from a MySQL database as well as customers that are stored in the Mongo collection. We'll do this step first and show you the data residing within the Gigaspaces space. I'll go ahead and enable two services to ingest the data into the Smart AH, the account data from MySQL and the customer data from Mongo, as mentioned. Um, and before I let that happen, let's take a look at monitoring our services and I can explain what's going on as the actual ingestion is occurring. Um, initially, um, additional services will be deployed within the same Smart DIH, which will handle the actual data load uh, and loading that data into uh, the space. What you'll see is that new connectors will be brought up uh, and uh, enabled, uh, and they will actually handle the connection. In this case, you see the MySQL connector successfully starting. It will go ahead and make the connection uh, to the MySQL database and pull that account information in. You also see the, also see the Mongo plugin uh, that has successfully deployed. Uh, and so now, uh, next to my stateful space, next to the in-memory data grid, I also have stateless services, which are, in this case, pluggable connectors that are um, deployed to ingest that data. So we have a number of methods to ingesting data. Uh, it can be batch load, it can be a pull, or it can be, uh, for transactional streaming data, uh, uh, an appropriate connection uh, for streaming or a plugin uh, to ingest that data. So if we look at the space now, we see that we have loaded uh, two object types and 4,588 entries. I can take a deeper look into the space and see that I now have the accounts and customers sample data that we discussed. Um, what's nice about the Smart DIH here is that what we can see is that we have uh, access to um, uh, not just the parameters of the data, but actually to a quick uh, SQL editor that we can actually take a look at the data. Um, I can look at this in a number of views. I can actually look at the demo data and drill down to a particular data type. So for example, account, uh, and I can look at the editor there and see a pre-populated uh, simple query in order to see uh, the data within the grid. Um, and then I can also check out um, uh, a global query. So I don't have to necessarily just go down and drill down to each table. Uh, and the really important thing to understand here is that if I run a query uh, within the grid, it's a common data model. I, I see the ability through this SQL editor, uh, let me just uh, grab the query here, um, that will allow me to um, query across two different data sources, a relational database uh, and also across the, um, the Mongo collection, the, the NoSQL database. So let's just do a, a quick statement here that will show you that I'm selecting from account, again, that came from MySQL, and customer, which came from Mongo, uh, and I'm looking up a particular account ID uh, 192. And I run that query, and I get that particular record back. So again, I just really want to stress that we're, we're doing a SQL type statement uh, against disparate and different technologies. As we continue our data ingestion, we're going to deploy our pluggable connector for reading data from SQL Server, which in our demonstration contains interest rates for various loan types, which change from time to time. So we'll want to monitor this through a CDC type connection. Here, we're deploying what we call our pluggable connector, which has the capacity to uh, leverage and learn incoming DDL information and generate a data pipeline in our case, using Kafka and Debezium Connect to read the, CCD, the CDC logs uh, for that loan information. And while we're at it, we'll also deploy a direct Kafka sync, which will be handling the transaction streams coming into the Smart DIH. Um, we'll also show here that uh, we're deploying a pulling container, which allows for detection of new transactions being written to the space and the ability to run uh, certain processes on that data 
aggregations or various uh, code-based execution uh, as those events happen inside the Gigaspaces uh, in-memory data grid. So to see these services being deployed, we'll go ahead and go back to the services monitor where we see our two spaces, the demo space, which is a stateful space in memory, uh, in our tiered space, which is also a stateful space uh, that, that uh, has data distributing across both memory and SSD and the two plugins we just uh, deployed. The next process will actually register the CDC connection um, and you'll see a service come up which will uh, provide that pluggable connector. Uh, first the Kafka connector for the transaction streams. You should see our stream coming up for the uh, CDC connection to MySQL. The pluggable connector as I mentioned. And what happens is uh, those, those services are deployed, um, copied over to the Spark DIH and uh, enabled. We also see a tool, a utility that we'll show in a bit uh, called the Service Creator, which allow for a SQL-based uh, definition for a RESTful service to be automatically generated uh, into underlying code uh, on the DIH and deployed as a microservice. So effectively, ultimately, that's what we want to provide to the application developer who's deploying that RESTful app that wants to display transactional information from those different data stores. Finally, we deploy our polling container, which in our case uh, is going to be leveraging uh, a notification system with the Telegram app. So uh, when new data comes in, we can send notifications um, based upon configuration. And last but not least, uh, we have a gateway service that's deployed. Uh, and the gateway service will enable um, an ODBC or JDBC connection to read the space. We expose the actual uh, underlying um, uh, data grid, uh, the contents, the space contents, uh, through a Postgres emulation. So if you have a Postgres client uh, utility, uh, you can simply point at the Smart DIH using that open uh, Postgres protocol. Before I go on, let's go back to our demo architecture and see what we've accomplished so far. We had the Smart DIH uh, deployed uh, with stateful spaces, both uh, in memory and uh, tiered storage between in memory and SSD. We deployed connectors for MySQL and Mongo to implement uh, or to uh, import data for uh, accounts, uh, which was coming from the relational store MySQL and document data uh, for customers uh, being ingested through a Mongo connector. We then demonstrated or implemented and demonstrated the pluggable connector, which is leveraging uh, Kafka Connect through Debezium to read the CDC changes uh, and push them into the Smart DIH space. Uh, and this was enabled through um, a data pipeline learner which read the DDL information from the Microsoft SQL Server, registering data types in the space, and then started monitoring for data changes, replicating them into the space. And we also installed a Kafka connector so that we can send transaction streams into the space. Uh, and uh, you'll note that um, we also deployed the polling uh, container uh, to check for transactions and process those transactions as they come in. Uh, so let's take a peek at the Ops Manager to review what we have currently uh, for transaction information. Now we've actually um, deployed the connector as we mentioned. So we have the Kafka connector up and running. It's green. Status is good. Uh, and if we look at the space, to look at the data, uh, what we'll see here is that it's registered its types. We have uh, transaction uh, documents coming in. 
We have the service descriptor for the service creation tool, but most notably we have the transaction doc, and then we talked about the pulling container uh, automatically operating uh, on the data um, and actually doing uh, account aggregation. So we're actually going to process and create some new information based upon the incoming transaction stream. Notice the number of entries we have for each of the types. So if we look at the account and customer data, we just did 4,500 accounts, 88 customers. Uh, but if we look at the actual transaction documents coming in, the transaction stream, we've only registered the types. We haven't actually streamed any of the data yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Before I do, though, I want to start uh, a monitoring dashboard, uh, Grafana, to look at the metrics coming out of this, the Gigaspaces in-memory data grid and the Smart DIH. Um, there's a very robust metrics API uh, con configuration. There's a very robust metrics connection uh, that can be fed into uh, various dashboards um, for uh, operational monitoring of the system. So if I log into Grafana, I can connect to the Gigaspaces Smart DH and look at a couple of the dashboards. So here I can look at uh, the various dashboards that come out of the box. Let's look at the Gigaspaces main dashboard. And this should look familiar. We have 4,500 accounts, 88 customers, five loans, the actual entries for object types. Well, we don't ha yet have the transaction documents. Um, so let's go ahead and actually start the transaction stream. Uh, and we should start to see data being ingested in this space. Now the Graphon dashboard is set up for a periodic refresh. Uh, so we'll start seeing data streaming in. We see here we have 10,000 transaction documents that will continue to grow. Uh, and something you'll also notice is that there's this new type, account aggregation. Remember I mentioned there was a pulling container, uh, and that pulling container is effectively an event listener for transaction documents being written to the space. Uh, and as each new transaction uh, is written, uh, it's detected, uh, and then an account aggregation against the existing customer data uh, is created so that we actually will have account information, um, the total number of transactions, and um, the sum of their current balance being calculated automatically uh, as each new transaction comes into the space. The uh, data types uh, are being written to the space. We see that we have 100,000 transaction documents. We actually can transform this uh, from document type to uh, more of a relational table type. And then finally, we have account aggregations. And just as a reminder, account aggregation wasn't a type that we ingested. It was actually uh, data that was calculated based upon uh, new events being written to the space, those new events being transactions that are streamed. And so for the various accounts, we have the account ID, we have the sum of all the transactions, uh, and the number of transactions that have been written to the space. So all this is dynamically done through polling containers, uh, which are uh, essentially um, event listeners for data being written. Um, so we're in good shape. Uh, if we go back to our services, everything is up and running. Uh, and we're in a good spot with our data gateway uh, and our service creator uh, to hand off to our application developers so that they can actually do low code generation of their own uh, RESTful endpoints. So let's take a look at that next. In order to do that, we're going to leverage the gateway service, which as I mentioned in the beginning of the demonstration, emulates uh, Postgres uh, SQL protocol uh, in order to um, gain access to the data within the space under a unified uh, view. Uh, and so what I'll do is actually um, I connect to that through, uh, in my case, either a JDBC connection uh, or an ODBC connection. I'll just show quickly an ODBC connection to the Smart DIH. Here in my system, uh, you see it's emulating Postgres driver. Uh, and if I look at the settings, uh, I put in the IP address 
uh, of my smart DIH, which we see here in our web URL, is 191 or 18.191.12.41 at port 5432, which is the default Postgres database. Our credentials, and we'll go ahead and hit test to see that we actually and are connecting successful. Great. So with ODBC, I've registered this DSN for Smart DIH. Uh, and then I can go back to my dBeaver tool, which we used previously, and instead of connecting to the system of record, uh, instead this time I actually want to connect to the smart DIH. So I make a new connection. Uh, I use ODBC uh, in this example. Uh, the database name is smart DIH. I enter my username, data user, my credentials, and I go ahead and test the connection. So I've connected successfully from dBeaver to the Smart DIH through the ODBC connection. Uh, and what you'll see here um, is really the whole point. Um, as I look through uh, using the dBeaver tool, making a connection to our, our demo space, uh, which is uh, depicted as a database uh, from the dBeaver perspective, this is quite interesting. Uh, I have under a single database connected to Smart DIH all the different data types, even though some of them came from a relational store, in my SQL case. Uh, some of them came from uh, NoSQL. Um, some came from Kafka Streaming, and some came from Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, so I'm able to actually see the data in a unified view. Um, and so if I'm an app developer, um, and I'm giving this utility or this, this capability, I can go ahead and uh, you know create a new query Let's go ahead and actually query the Smart DIH. Um, and I have here, just for the sake of time, uh, a demonstration query, which uh, will demonstrate that we can actually take a look at information across two different uh, or three, two or more uh, disparate data types. So here I'm actually selecting information from uh, account, which is mentioned, came from MySQL, a transaction doc, which was our Kafka stream, ingestion of uh, transactions. And I'll go ahead and run this particular query against the space. And what we'll see here is that we get that unified data view uh, out, of the, out of the system. Uh, we can do also, just to show you that it, uh, we can change the account number, go ahead and run that again, and we see information related to account 385. So through this utility, we are able to survey the data, we're able to uh, come up with our own queries, uh, and then ultimately, uh, when I, when I want to actually deploy a service, I can use the low-code service creation tool, and that I'll demonstrate next. You recall from the beginning of our demo, uh, we had uh, an application developer who had written an application uh, using React. He wanted to display account and transaction information uh, in his page. Um, and so we just showed how we can actually survey the data uh, and come up with um, a SQL query. Uh, and so I'm able to take that SQL query uh, and using the Gigaspaces service creation tool, I'm able to actually create a new endpoint uh, for that application to consume. This is really a, a wow moment because um, in a low-code approach, I'm able to actually generate this service. So let's go ahead and leverage our query. So we put our query in that we want to leverage. Uh, we go ahead and actually uh, change this to be parameterized because I want to actually read the actual account number um, uh, from the from the uh, uh, web page uh, that it's servicing, uh, and we give it this a name. And this ends up being the uh, endpoint uh, name. So get txn is what the application developer was asking for the endpoint to be. Uh, the port it's being served up on um, is port 8116 um, and the description is account and transaction detail microservice or whatever
whatever you want to add in there. So as I mentioned, uh, all I needed to do was be able to uh, query that unified data model, choose my query, plug in a few simple parameters, um, and actually um, the local generator will actually uh, create the blueprint, um, uh, go ahead and compile the microservices and deploy it on the smart DIH. Um, and so if we go back and take a peek at the Ops Manager, we can see that the, pro the process has started uh, and we'll see the completion of the service deployment. So here you see the Get Transaction Service uh, being deployed um, in the same DIH. Um, so you basically have uh, your services, your core services and data uh, all nicely together. Uh, the Get TXN service has started successfully, indicated by the green bar. Uh, and so, again, in the wow moment here uh, is I can simply go back um, to my application uh, and previously where it couldn't fetch the data, I can enter my uh, account ID that I want to query. Um, it will go ahead and hit that endpoint, uh, do the read against the space, and, and provide the data uh, that we're looking for, uh, all through a very low-code approach. Uh, and that's the whole point of the Smart DIH, uh, the ability to accelerate the development and continuous development uh, on the north side or your application developers and, and microservices and data as a service, uh, while streamlining um, the actual integration of systems of record, uh, no matter uh, if they're uh, very different types of data coming in. Um, and the key point here is that this is all um, useless without a high-performance, scalable, um, resilient, in-memory data grid uh, as your uh, high-performance data store. So that's really what the Smart DAH brings together. Thanks for listening to our demo today. Uh, for more information on Smart DAH and the Digital Integration Hub, go over to gigaspaces.com where you'll find a lot of information about all our product solutions. Thanks and have a great day.